What is going on guys, it is JJ here back with another Euro 2020 qualifiers video. Today we're going to talk about the Greece versus Italy matchup in the Euro 2020 qualifiers. This Italia team, since they've come under Roberto Mancini, I feel like they've had sort of a revamp. It's a good mix of, of the old with the young, uh, with the likes of, you know, Jorginho, Nicola Barella, uh, of course, Federico Chiesa up front going alongside, you know, with Andrea Bellotti, Insigne, and then the defense as per normal, Emerson. Chiellini, Bonucci, and Florenzi. Yeah, I almost lost it. I almost lost it there. But it's something Italy didn't do is lose it because they absolutely dominated this Greece team three uh, nothing. It, it was just it was. It kind of it kind of got boring to watch after a while. All three goals coming in the first half. Uh, Barella got the scoring open. I'm thinking around the 23rd minute. A beautiful assist inside the box from Bellotti. Kind of made it very easy for him to score. Uh, second goal from Insigne set up by Chiesa once again. And then the third goal scored by I believe it was Bonucci. Assisted by Emerson Palmieri, which I, I love. You know, as a Chelsea guy, I gotta love Emerson. Uh, this game was just like built for the midfield that this Italian team have. They have Marco Verratti, Jorginho, and Barella in midfield. Barella, I, I know that everyone says he's more of a defensive playmaker. Like, he, he plays less of a box-to-box -box role, more defensive. Um, he didn't have to do that today. Uh, he got to roam forward as much as he pleased. Uh, him, Verratti, and Jorginho. Jorginho in this game. I think he saw the young yesterday, or a couple days ago, from the Netherlands play against England and said... I want to top that. I want to see how many passes I can make compared to him because Jorginho on the ball today was just everywhere. I mean, this guy, when you give him the, the ball at the base of that 4-3-3 and you let him pull the strings here and there, it's it's like it's actually like poetry. It, it just it just goes. It just flows. And it, it just never ends. 70% possession. They outpassed Greece by two and a half times the amount of passes. Jorginho's pass success rate, I think, was around 91 or 90%, something like uh, that number. Like, it, it was an absolute class performance for him. him from the defense, from the attack as well. Bernadeschi, when he came into the game, I thought had a great, great sort of intro into the contest. Uh, Bellotti actually looked like his form from last year. I know he didn't do great this year uh, for Torino, but... I thought he played fantastic in this game. Uh, I thought he was very good. I thought Kiesa was very good. I know he's usually more in that striker role. I know he can play along either wing. Him in the right wing was really well because it worked well. with he, He's a very good dribbler and ball progressor from the wing. So him working alongside Florenzi uh, with Barella running around that midfield area and then Insigne as the deep ball threat worked so well. Uh, Mancini got it completely right against Greece. It... it I know Greece is a is a bit of a you know lesser opponent. They had five shots in total, uh, two on target, one of those from a set piece. So they they got into the game, but I mean Sidigu wasn't very tested. Chiellini, Benucci weren't very tested. Emerson, I feel like at times was tested, uh, but that's because he roams really high up the field. Uh, he always does. He does it for for club and for country. Just always sort of roams up the field, uh, but. The substitutes as well, I thought, did a pretty good job in this contest. Obviously, Bernadeschi played really well. Deschiglio, uh, or Deschiglio, however you say it. I'm not quite sure I'm saying it right. I thought he played very well as well. And I can't quite remember who the third substitution was. Oh, Lorenzo Pellegrini. Lorenzo Pellegrini uh, came coming in for Verratti because Verratti... Verratti, after a while, you can tell when he's really tired. Uh, but, I mean, he got... Easy little quick rest. Pellegrini getting some minutes overall. Uh, a couple of these guys are going to be joining the Euro U21 squad for Italy. I know Barella will, Chiesa will, uh, Moise Keane, who was on the bench today, will. So it's going to be really exciting to see players who are now proven, I feel like, at the senior level, going down to the U21 Euros and absolutely smashing it up. Uh, that's going to be a really exciting competition to watch. Maybe a bit more exciting than this game was because Italy absolutely dominated Greece 3 to nothing uh, in this contest. They remain, I believe, top of the group in their group for Euro 20. 2020 qualifications. It was it was an easy performance. You know, nothing to really worry about. Three goals in the first half, and then you just let your foot off the gas and you coast. So that's exactly what Italy did. They just passed Greece to death in the second half. Um, but you guys should let me know your thoughts on the contest down in the comments below as well. Let me know what other Euro 2020 qualifiers you guys would like to see on this channel. Obviously, you know, we, we've been focused a lot on the Women's World Cup, the U20s. Uh, we had a several, several games going on in my room just around me. I have four screens here. I was just trying to watch as many games as possible. Uh, so this one, after after the first half was done, you know, is kind of a, a snoozer. But I tried, to, I tried to keep my focus on it. So you guys should let me know if I missed anything sort of from the second half of Greece versus Italy. Thank you guys so much for watching. 
and peace.